Hey carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having an amazing meat fuel day. And as always, let me know how you all are doing down below in the comment section. Today, I'll be featuring an epic collaboration with the Carnivore Dream Team featuring Carrie from Homestead How. Adam from Carnivore Today, and my friends Raymond Nazon and Emily Harvo. We will be dishing out the juiciest insights on all things carnivore. Before we get started, I just wanted to share that my next carnivore challenge is open for sign up. If you are looking for a community to belong to so that you can stay on track and accountable every single day, this is the community for you. I will be inviting on all of the brilliant faces shown on the screen. Professor Thomas Seafried, Dr. Elizabeth Bright, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Robert Kiltz, Dr. Tony Hampton, and Coach Rebecca Heishman. For more details and to directly sign up and join us, feel free to go to the URL shown on the screen, svgmeetup.com, or check out the links down below in the description box. Without further ado, let me bring on Carrie and Adam. Welcome. Thank you, Belle. Appreciate it. Yeah, my name is Carrie. I've been working on the documentary Healing Humanity. I have been on the proper human diet. I'm coming up on a year here pretty shortly. And uh, I'm a big fan, Bella. I'm I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Carrie. I'm I'm Adam Lacey. I'm also working on the Healing Humanity, the Power of a Proper Human Diet documentary, uh, along with Carrie. Uh, he he mentioned that he wanted to start this documentary, and I I was all in from before he even said that he wanted to do it. So uh, he, here we are, uh, several months later. And uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm, couldn't be happier with uh, with what we've got so far and where we're going in the future. Well, I'm curious to know, since you both are on social media, YouTube and Instagram, what are the most common misconceptions about living a carnivore lifestyle? Adam, I'll go real quick first because I got one at the top of my head. This is a great question. Uh, I could never do carnivore diet like you do, Carrie. That one drives me absolutely insane. <laughs> and I get it because when I started, I was like, this is crazy. But now that I'm doing it, like after two weeks into it, it literally couldn't be anything easier or natural to me. I don't even think about it. It's just go and eat meat. And sometimes I forget to do it. So that I think is a big one, which is understandable because it's so far from the social norm and the standard American diet. But I could never do right. carnivore like you do. It's so frustrating, too, because I see people suffering so bad. It's like, here's the answer. And it's so simple. But they have this Thing in their head that I could never do it. So that's kind of a big one. The biggest one for me is people claim that the carnivore diet is just an elimination diet. You know, mm -hmm. it, essentially it's it, the equivalent to a vegan diet, right? Because a vegan diet is an elimination diet as well. But right. yeah, it's it's frustrating to to see that comment over and over and over again and you know really try to explain to these folks that uh, it's it's more than just an elimination diet you're adding in such nutrient dense food and fuel for your body uh you know it's it's not even it's not even comparable to a vegan diet whatsoever so that's probably the biggest one that i see you're gonna have a heart attack because you're eating meat right we've all oh, heard it yes. and it's so frustrating <laughs> when you're starting carnivore and you have family and friends just scaring the heck out of you this was my other big epiphany. I know I mentioned it earlier, but um, when I interviewed Dr. Philip Ovadia, he was like, if you have poor metabolic health, you're six times more likely to suffer heart disease than if you have bad cholesterol. Six times. That's like huge. And yet nobody out there in the general public has any concern whatsoever for their metabolic health. The only thing they say is you're going to have a heart attack. Oh, what about your cholesterol? You can't possibly eat meat. And it's just, it's so backwards and it's so wrong. Like everyone out there in the world should be worried about poor metabolic health and inflammation. That was one of the biggest things I learned from Professor Seafried. Cancer, most cancer is caused from chronic inflammation. And you can get that from smoking, but I know before I started carnivore, I had chronic inflammation from the horrible foods I was eating for years and years and decades and decades. And if I continued to do that, the odds of me getting cancer, I'm sure are very, very high. Absolutely. Or heart disease. And that's, that's the beauty about it. You know, you can literally feel uh, being on a carnivore diet and all of this energy you get and this great feeling you get. So you feel the difference, you know, cause I, I'm, I have heart issues. So, you know, I have a high calcium score and uh, one of the issues is I couldn't even get out and take a walk without huffing and puffing. And shortly after carnivore, I was doing five K's and 10 K's wow. and running like it's running it. Like it's uh, it, it's I'm like, what's going on? I'm not out of breath. I'm not nothing. It's like, what's going on. So this to me shows a better heart than what it was before. Kind of like what you're saying there, Carrie, it's like the inflammation. 
the inflammation goes, you can do a lot more things than when the inflammation's there. So how can that be poor for your health right. as far as your heart? How can that be? It just doesn't make sense. Raymond, uh, I have similar issues too. I have, uh, I was diagnosed, I had a mini stroke several years ago and then I had a bunch of tests done. I have a low ejection fraction. I think it was under 40. So I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure and I'm, I'm still waiting to get into the cardiologist to get all these tests done. But it's exactly like you said, since I've been doing the proper human diet, like I used to stand up and I would get dizzy and I feel like I could stand up and run a marathon right now. And I've had an irregular heartbeat since I was born. I used to have to wear heart monitors and everything. It's wow. gone on carnivore, which is just crazy. Wow. This happened a couple months ago. My wife and I were watching a movie. She had her head in my chest. She's like, your heart's beating normally for the first time. Um, so I don't know if my ejection fraction changed. I don't know if I still have congestive heart failure. I, if I had to bet, I would say it's reversed or something because I, I feel so much better now. I don't get dizzy standing up. I have, just like you said, I feel like I could run a marathon. I have so much extra energy now. I, I learned too. I asked that to, uh, Dr. Ovadia too. He's like, you know, when the body's in ketosis, the heart performs more efficiently. And I wish that one of the cardiologists over the years would have told me that too. Not that it's going to cure everything, but I was doing keto on and off. And if someone had told me that, I would have been like, well, okay, maybe I'll stick with keto or be more serious about it. Or maybe I would have learned about carnivore earlier or something. I don't know. Yeah. All you need to know is the answer. And that's the thing that that's what I'm hoping healing humanity is going to say. Hey, it's like, we got the answer. Are you willing to step up and say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. And that's what I like what you guys are doing, spreading that message just to say, Hey, I'm hopeless. I've tried everything else. Why don't I give this a shot? And maybe just maybe they can have the results that we've had here right around us. What Absolutely. I love about your story and what is really standing out is the emotion connection piece of what I love about your bromance and how this has started and the movie got going. <laughs> and um, that's, I think, what what Bella did when she, uh, a couple of years ago, she got lonely in her journey and put it out yes. there to start a community. And it was the emotion, the connection. And Raymond came into that very quickly. I found it pretty quick. And we've been in that community for, you know, three, four years now. And, four years. Um, but yeah, I think that, that that part of the carnivore story and finding a way to um, have that solidify and share that and have that emotion, that connection and spread that. And so it's not yes. only that we're just like spreading this revolutionary change inside of our lives. We're also like really engaging the community and getting so much um, energy off of that. And so I, I just see you all as pioneers in the emotional connection <laughs> carnivore message. It's so beautiful. Uh, well, I appreciate that because I, I really believe you can't change other people. Like I can't say you should eat this way. They're just right. never going to listen, but you can inspire other people. And that's yes. what we're hoping to do with these these stories. And just real quick, this isn't flattery, but I just want to say shout out to uh, Bella Steak and Butter Gang, the group. I get so many emails and so many comments from people. And I've been I tell everyone, go do your coaching in your group because I've had several people tell me now. Um, one in particular that's helping us, he's a documentary filmmaker and he's consulting with us. And he's like, I joined every group, like literally every single group available. He's like, Bella's is by far the best. So um, that's so sweet of you to bring up. Thank you for saying that, Carrie. Yeah, thank you. Well, I actually prepared a list of common misconceptions that I get every day. And I would love to play a game with you all, Emily Raymond as well. I will say this misconception out loud and we can take turns on how we reply. Eating a carnivore diet is restrictive, orthorexic, and introducing an eating disorder. I think disease and mental depression and being stuck and hopeless in my house was restrictive. Eating a ribeye steak is not restrictive for me. And not to steal from Dr. Barry, but he kind of mentioned this too when we were asking him. He's like, if your only joy in life is your food and your food <laughs> is your entertainment, that's almost like it's a drug. Food should be for sustenance mm. and... Um, yeah, I, I get I enjoy eating a ribeye, but I enjoy more so spending time with my family and my girls and the years I missed with them before. Well yes. said. How about you, Adam? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say that restrictive is a traumatic brain injury where I don't have good balance. Uh, mm -hmm. Restrictive is having depression and anxiety to the point where I'm missing out on business deals. I'm missing out on connections with family and friends. Uh, that that's far more restrictive than than any way that I'm going to eat. So that's definitely what I would say about that. 
I'm echoing a uh, restriction to me was not being the kind of mom that I wanted to be knowing how I wanted to be knowing how I wanted to show up for them and not being able to do that. It is completely worth it to change uh, who I am in my relationships, who I am as a mom and who I am in my friends and with my family. No restriction, really. For me, uh, the way I see it, this is what I like. I'm at the point I'm six years in and I would always choose to have a ribeye steak, maybe a little bit of cheese on the side, because that's what I like. So is it restrictive if it's what I like? This is what I like. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah. I want to even make an example real quick. It's kind of like uh, mm -hmm. there are some people that only eat the uh, uh, McDonald's fries with uh, their burger, and that's all they eat all the time. Well, That's I'm orthorexic. Restricted. Right. Would you call that orthorexic? <laughs> well, I have a favorite dish and I like to do that every day. It's so funny when the plate has a cupcake and a salad and some meat, that's considered acceptable. But when you only have meat, everybody has an issue with that. And again, like Adam and I, we've tried the vegan diet where we cut out all processed foods and all animal foods and only ate plant foods. That did nothing to our health. It ruined our mental health, our physical physical health, all of it. So mm. I would much rather stick to animal foods and have food freedom. I never yes. experienced food freedom ever until I just <laughs> ate animal foods, meat, and fat. Okay, next misconception yeah. is this. Eating meat makes you smell bad and sweaty. I get this every day, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I have found just the opposite. <laughs> like, I don't seem to have any body odor or sweat or anything uh, on the carnivore diet. I also have a lot of other things that fire people up. Like, I don't seem to get sunburn anymore. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> like, that, that fires yes. some people up. But, yeah, it's been precisely the opposite for me. That's incredible. Same here. Adam, how about you? Uh, basically, lockstep with Carrie. You know, I, I feel like that I don't smell as bad as I did before. I uh, don't have any issues with uh, cleanliness like I like I would before. And yeah, it's, I would say that's just patently false. <laughs> that's not even correct. I didn't even you? have gas. Like I used to have all kinds <laughs> right? of digestion yes. issues. And so there was a whole nother stink that we're talking about. <laughs> so I have no digestion problems. And for sure, I don't have body odor. Like all of that has um, gotten so much better. I mean, I think that sometimes when people go on, maybe there's a detox period. So maybe they're going through something like that. But I think in right. general, eating 100% meat to me has just made everything a lot better. For me, uh, it's a little disappointing not to have any body odor because uh, that used to be fun to rub on my kids, you know, so <laughs> and uh, also, you know, the flatulence was kind of fun with them, too. But uh, so now I'm kind of the boring dad. I can't do that anymore. So I absolutely do not smell to the point where even my wife does not like that because she feels like she doesn't like the way she smells. But sometimes and then she, it, it, it she doesn't feel good that I don't smell. Yeah, I've had to just completely cut out body soap and deodorant because I don't need it anymore. So I'm not sure if you guys still use personal care items like soap. Do you guys use shampoo? I haven't. And I did a, I think I did a video on it. But yeah, I don't use any shampoo or conditioner. Just use water. Yep. Nice. I, my, my whole thing was it's like God made the perfect human body and figured all this out. But then he's like, no, they're going to have to put some chemical detergent in their hair and wipe away all the oils. And it's like, it doesn't make any sense. It, and I have a really thick head of hair. I got to get my hair cut like a crazy amount of time. So it seems like I've been doing something right. That's awesome. Carnival provides no fiber. So that means the meat rots in your stomach and you can't poop. Yeah, I think that one's a big, big misconception. I don't think there's really any science behind sort of the pathways behind. You got to have fiber. You got to have this. I have been more regular and normal and my digestive whole system and performance has been flawless on carnivore it's like i don't even have to think about it so it's it's really uh, it's really the opposite i think of what a lot of people think yeah and for me coming from a raw vegan diet mm -hmm. which is that's that's sort of the fiber in that diet is is tremendous you know it's yes. uh, kind of like a badge of honor and i thought you were gonna say traumatic, <laughs> traumatic. <laughs> it is traumatic yeah. i'm sure it is tremendous yeah. and oh my goodness so yeah it was I, I went from, you know, three times a day uh, on a vegan diet to uh, once every four to five days on a carnivore diet. And uh, nice. yeah, it seems like you might be constipated or something like that, but there's no pain. And uh, it's very, you know, hard, my French, small when when uh, when <laughs> when we do pass. So it's mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there, that's a huge 
misconception that that you need fiber to to have things move along. That's just false. Yeah, things are absorbed higher up on an all meat diet. It just there's just not much waste. Um, and mm -hmm. so what I see with our clients and our members is like they got so much time back. You have so much time because you can fast. So there's extra time you got back, and you're not spending all your time on the toilet. And so one of the guys <laughs> that was uh, at this uh, reverse with us was a farmer, and he's like, "I'm going to make so much more money now because I had to run in off the tractor and go all throughout the day, mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I'm not going to deal with that as much." So uh, great for bathroom and actually overall life efficiency i used to go three times a day so uh back then and we're talking about because i used to take xylem husk because fiber was good i used to have these big logs the only thing i ended up because of the xylem husk was hemorrhoids uh and you know that caused a lot of problems later on when i started on a carnivore diet the hemorrhoids went away uh it was uh totally regular and the other thing is i started thinking about the amount of time I used to spend back then. I used to spend up to 30 minutes to an hour every time, three hours. So we could say almost three hours a day, it was in the bathroom. I got three hours of my life back. You know, yeah. I barely go. Sometimes I go once every, uh, uh, I don't know, every third day or whatnot, you know? So it's like, and it's easy. So if mm -hmm. time is money, this carnivore really gave me a lot more back. One thing I just wanted to say too that I realized recently is, Raymond, think of that three hours, but also think of the toll that put on your body because basically what it was doing was unnecessarily processing and digesting a bunch of waste, waste in and waste out for years and years and decades and decades. I was just thinking like, exactly. what a toll that would take on the human body that I'm not, no longer putting on my body. That's right. I think that that's so much why uh, carnivore is an anti-aging or reverse aging. We aren't doing all these things that are like prematurely aging us. And I agree, Carrie. When I was vegan, eating all plant foods, only rice, lots of rice, <laughs> I would have so much bloat. Okay. So mm. that says everything about my digestion. I eat, I have bloat. I'm still hungry a couple hours later, and then I have to pass two times a day. So I also wanted to add to the fact that you save money when you're a carnivore, less buying toilet paper. And I'm Asian, yes, so I love paper, saving right. money. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, when and the pandemic sure. came about, I wasn't even worried. I was like, oh, we have- Exactly. Okay. <laughs> no big deal. I go no through need. one for a long time. It takes a while for me to go through it. You're saving water too. So less water money too. on your water bill. That's right. Less right. flushing. Less flushing. Yep. Saving the I planet. I saved a ton of money on no longer paying for all of these too. Beautiful. I'm very curious, Carrie and Adam, what does your family think of your diet? And are they partaking with you? Are they living this carnivore lifestyle or no? <laughs> so my family, uh, they don't think I'm crazy, which is good. Okay. Uh, most of them don't join, join in with me, but I have had a few people reach out on Facebook and they never like a, a post. They never comment on a post. Uh, mm. I, until I get a random message one day uh, from several people and they say, hey, uh, I've been on the carnivore diet now for two weeks and man, I'm fitting into pants that I've never fit in, you know, for four yeah. years. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm actually having an influence, I guess, in uh, in the Facebook world for sure, but uh, not not with my immediate family yet. My, my two sons are actually eating more more meat now. So I think that they see how, you know, the changes and results in me and uh, the benefits that I've had. And they're like, well, it's, it's open season now, you know, they're, they're not following that dogma of they're going to get a heart attack if they eat a bunch of fatty meat. Yeah. And Adam, what are the more profound benefits that you've experienced through going carnivore? Well, I started for an autoimmune condition, vitiligo. And like you, Bella, I was vegan for two years prior to going to the carnivore diet. And wow. it wasn't just vegan, it was raw vegan. Uh, which oh, is whoa. the absolute, absolute mm. worst. <laughs> so, but in terms of benefits that I've had, I've had uh, plantar fasciitis was healed within five days. I had that for two years. Um, the vitiligo is reversing. It isn't, it isn't completely reversed yet, but it is reversing. Um, I had a six year old traumatic brain injury where I lost 10% of my brain function and mm. that has healed 100%. Uh, mm. the, the, the benefits that I've received are just absolutely mind numbing. I, I could have never imagined that this brain injury could have been healed. I went to, right. to therapy for two years. 
to learn how to, you know, regain my balance and not have vertigo effects and motor tics and uh, just all kinds of cognition issues. And within five months of the carnivore diet, strict carnivore, uh, yeah, that that completely went away and it just blows my mind still to this day. That's incredible. Wow. That really must have changed your quality of life right there, right? Not having vertigo. Amen. And, <laughs> right, right. That's what it's all about. Awesome. You said you did strict carnivore. Did you just do this on your own? Yep. I found a Dr. Berry video where he talked about B, 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 and E. And oh. that was it. You know, nice. I, I'm very... I'm very regimented when I, whenever I do any sort of a diet or anything, really, uh, like the vegan diet, you know, it had to be raw because that's, you know, that's the best way to do the vegan diet. Right. So, um, the carnivore diet, I started B, 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 and E and that was all she wrote. I love Is that it. Still how you eat today? I am actually on the lion diet now. I've been on the lion diet oh. for 14 days now. Even better up in your yep. game. I love it. And Carrie, what does your family think of carnivore? They're sick of me doing the Dr. Berry finger, but other than that, um, I think they're, I think they like it a lot. Uh, one of the thing, reasons I'm so passionate about this documentary, I mentioned before, I always show people all my, my pills I was on for years. I was on so much oh, medication wow. for depression wow. and anxiety and mental health issues. And like, it's one thing if it was just me that was going through the depression, but after the fact, now I'm realizing how much more that affect my family and my girls that they had to yes. see their father sitting on a couch and catatonic. And why is dad sad? Why is dad mad for years and years and years? So I think they're a lot happier with my uh, attitude and mood. I, I get so many comments from people on the YouTube stuff saying, oh, you're so motivational. And it just makes me shake my head because I was completely the opposite for so long. It's just uh, carnivore and eating properly has changed things for me so much. In terms of the family too, my wife and I have triplets plus one. Oh. And my yeah, my 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 plus one, my oldest, Lily, she has been through all sorts of stuff. She just turned, she's about to turn 19, uh, but she had open heart surgery at 13. She had a couple of blood clots from medication she was on um, that in retrospect, I don't think she needed if she was eating the proper human diet. The blood clots almost killed her. And then for years, she had this horrible skin condition called HS. And it's just like a very painful, looks like acne. It was all over her back and all over her chest. Oh, and thing. we took her to like, four different dermatologists. We spent thousands of dollars trying to just get her some relief. At one point she was like, I just want to die. This hurts so bad. None of these doctors are helping. We've been trying for years. She went on carnivore with me and on day eight, half of her back cleared up. And by day 30, the HS was completely gone. And I'm happy. I'm so happy about it. But then I'm also mad on the opposite side because I'm like, not right. one of those dermatologists mentioned nutrition. And then in retrospect, it's like, Duh, it's like a peanut allergy or something. She's eating food that was affecting her. It's like so simple now. So my daughter, Lily, she's carnivore right now. She did it for 30 days. And then she's like, I'm going to reincorporate things. And I, I tried to like be very nice about it. I'm like, I wouldn't do that. But um, <laughs> she's gone back and forth. At one point, my whole family was carnivore. Yes. My wife oh, tried wow. it, but she was vegetarian and she jumped into it too quick. Right now, my wife is keto. My daughter, Katie's keto. My daughter, Lily's carnivore. My daughter, Ke Emma's carnivore. And Alyssa's kind of in the middle. I'm not sure what she's doing right now. It kind of fluctuates. But one last thing I'll say on the family that's kind of crazy is my mom is carnivore. My stepdad is carnivore for like eight months now. My mom's in her 70s. And she, like me, she had mental health issues that are gone. Knee aches, you know, um, mobility issues when you're getting older. Those are all resolved. My younger sister, two years younger, is carnivore. And my older sister, two years older than me, is carnivore. And it's just spreading like that. Now, their examples... For their peers and their friends and now i imagine a couple more people are going to see them and do it it just seems like a carnivore proper human diet spreading like wildfire that way by these individual examples which is kind of the purpose of the documentary is to share these documented stories and examples yeah it's becoming more normalized it's kind of you know people used to do the 30-day juice cleanse or the cabbage soup or the you know people even if they're just looking at a carnivore as a cleanse i'm like that's fine that was i did it. i was just gonna do it for 30 days you know and i'm three and a half years in and and so to me it's just like that it's on the menu of people considering doing this nutritional approach and the body just gets that nutrition. It's like, ah, yes. just it soaks Finally. in every little bit. Our brain gets it and, you know, <laughs> right. it turns into such a beautiful thing. So it, it can't, you know, I, I think that you, we, we can't keep it down and it, it's just going to spread organically as a grassroots. Um, but that's why our, as a community, we have so much passion about people like you guys that are just going to take it to this next level. And so that we can just say, 
here, watch this movie. <laughs> just, just spend an hour and watch this and see what you think. I wanted to follow up since, Carrie, you were talking about your family. You've probably observed a lot of issues and common mistakes. Getting tired of eating meat every single day. And some people call it palate fatigue or meat aversion. What are your tips around this common hurdle? Well, that's a good question. I haven't experienced that myself yet, um, but I have had some friends that have. One thing that I've been doing, it seems like you start going carnivore and then you start changing other things, like getting more exercise and getting more sunlight and all these things I never did before. And one of those additional things I started doing was fasting. And that's kind of my mm -hmm. plan for like friends I've had that have had a meat aversion. If that were to happen to me, I think I would try maybe a 24 hour fast or something like that and see, yeah. because I, I have a feeling if I do that, I'm gonna be like, okay, it's, it's mm -hmm. gone now. I'm, I'm hungry again. Um, or maybe switching things up, I guess, could be another another idea. Uh, not having the same thing over and over again, trying some eggs or something like that for a little while. But uh, fasting mm -hmm. seems to uh, seems to be a good one for some. I've heard other people get over meat aversions with fasting. Yes, yeah. and the, the crossover is about the health benefits from fasting. Every single thing that we've talked about, cancer and you know weight issues and isolation, mental issues, even you know that there there's a place for that in in those worlds as well. Um, so that's awesome that that was the first kind of hack that came to mind. Yeah. And that's beautiful, really. If we're eating the proper human diet, we can properly fast. So there's a difference. And that's what I noticed over and over again. You know, uh, both uh, Emily and I, we're, we love fasting. So uh, it's nothing for us to, uh, you know, do 36s, uh, 72s, you know, five days, you know, whatnot. But it's, it's only possible because when you're fully nourished, like you said, if you're tired of food, that's just like, that's fine. Just go without for a little bit. No big right. deal. And then you'll want it. You'll love that steak. You'll be like, wow, I can't wait to have that steak. Yes. It's such an enhancement. It enhances the other healthy things that are happening in our life. And so when I went carnivore, it enhanced my fast. When I was just fasting in keto or fasting in whole foods, you know, when the, I was great in the fast, that hack itself was doing miraculous things for me. But then when it was done, it was time for me to eat. I got off track and I couldn't figure things out from there. So it was like the, the perfect enhancement for every area of my life. Yeah. I love the fasting thing too, because when I was doing keto years ago, I did a three day fast once and it was mm -hmm. very hard and I was doing kind of dirty keto, but my friend Jeff with uh, stage four cancer, like I said, he's fasted 40 times, five days in a row. And one of the times I said, I'm going to just do this five day with you as a carnivore. And I wasn't trying to diminish it, but it was way easier than the previous time I tried it when I was non-carnivore. It makes sense because I'm in keto. And then a couple months later, Jeff is like, he had this big cancer scan come up. He's like, I should do an eight day fast before this one. I'm like, I'm going to do it with you. So oh. I did an eight day fast with him and wow. I never felt better. Like by the end of that fast, I'm like, I don't want this to end. I feel almost like euphoric. I've got so much it's, it's weird. It's so counterintuitive, but right. I'm a huge fan. I love what you said, Raymond too, because I keep going back to whatever is natural for humans is what is best. And I feel like back in the day, hunters and gatherers, we would have went and hunted a big animal. We would have feasted and it probably would have been five days or four days or three days before we found another animal. So it's like, hey, whatever's natural. I was almost tempted with Jeff. I'm like, it, it might be cool. I'm, I want to incorporate regular fasting, but maybe sort of randomized like it would have been back in the day, maybe three days like here, five it. days there or something like that to switch it up. Yeah. So another another thing that we have to realize, so we feasted on the on the meat of that animal that we killed and we would go probably, you know, three to five days. But here's the ticker that we never realize. So normally people who go five days are like on the couch or like sleeping it off. No, we have to be at our best because if yeah. we don't get that next kill, well, we wouldn't be here right now. Right. Right. Because our ancestors would have not made it. <laughs> we right. are here. So therefore, they were operating at their best when they were hungry. Yes, that's a really good point. Yeah, they're out there trying to get that next kill. That's, that's right. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Exactly. It's not easy. So since we're on the note of your documentary, how is that going so far? And what do you hope this film will achieve? It's going great so far. The ultimate goal behind it was to help reach the hopeless. I suffered from... Uh, depression and anxiety most of my adult life. And the only thing that ever fixed it for me was eating the proper human diet. We started out filming Bill out in Alaska. He's 700 pounds. He's been stuck in his house for four years. He just hit his seven month mark. And we're looking forward to going back and filming him soon. 
Um, he's down over 200 pounds, but more importantly, he's overcome clinical depression, anxiety. He's like, I have hope. I have a purpose now. And he has a huge fan base as well. A lot of people following him on YouTube and are uh, excited for him. So yeah, we just got done filming uh, the Dr. Ken Berry. And uh, we had a fabulous time meeting him. Uh, he's so gracious with his time. And, you know, he's so very well spoken and passionate about this message and and everything that s surrounds, uh, you know, healing humanity. Um, it, I mean, it was just, it was like watching uh, poetry in motion, listening to him talk in person. And uh, I couldn't stop smiling. He made me laugh several, several times, uh, trying to not laugh out loud on, on the, the audio. And uh, yeah, it was, it was incredibly uh, awesome experience. So one of the things I was thinking about is, is the response, um, the response that you got, for example, to uh, Bill Knott, to the documentary itself, to um, it's just, it's like nothing I've ever seen, I've heard of, and I get it because it's, you know, because of what it has meant to me. What do you think this is about? What What's happening here? Uh, Bill Knott uses the word providence a lot. And mm -hmm. that's the only way I can explain it because I really can't explain it. The whole Bill Knott part of the story is really kind of incredible. He saw one of my YouTube videos and left me this long comment. And he basically said, if I don't change my diet, I'm not going to be on this earth much longer. And it really just touched me. He had depression, anxiety, things like that. Of course, he's overweight. But um, it was like three weeks later, my daughter, Emma and I were out there filming him. And one of the things he told me when we started filming him to kick off filming of the documentary was, he was so hopeless for so long. He was like, what is my purpose in life if I'm just stuck here in a bed for four years in a little house in the most beautiful place on the world in Alaska? And he couldn't leave. He's like, what is my purpose in life? And in just short time since he started his YouTube channel, it's completely swipped, uh, flipped to where now he's like, I have the ultimate purpose. He's inspiring so many people. There's so many people saying, listen, if Bill can do this stuck in his house at 700 pounds, I can certainly do this. And he's just getting so many inspirational comments from people that are like, Bill, you fired me up. You inspired me. And now I'm doing this. And now it's changed my life forever. Um, so yeah. it's it's incredible. The incredible thing with Bill, too, I was just I was talking to someone about this the other day. And I'm like, when Bill first approached me, he's like, maybe I could start a YouTube channel. But he'd never done YouTube before or anything like that. Um, he's, he's just huddled in his house. I'm like, yeah, we could try to get you going on a YouTube channel and get a GoFundMe going and, and do those things. But what are the odds that he would happen to do those things and be so incredibly good at it? It's like he he has so many fans, like his videos are getting 20, 30,000 views just out of the bat. And everyone, yeah. even my own mother, I meet people in public and they're like, yeah, you're great, Carrie. But what about that Bill? How's Bill doing? Everyone's asking about Bill and he just has a huge fan base. So it's it's incredible. I mean, I, if you found a thousand individuals in Bill's position, what are the odds that one would be so charismatic, have such a good heart, like touch people so much like Bill has. It's, it's just, I, I can't, he, Bill says Providence all the time. That's, I just can't wrap my brain around it, but I'm thankful for it. And the other thing that's just really interesting with the whole Bill thing is we're like best friends. Now we talk every single day. So, and that's going to awesome. be the conclusion of the documentary is watching Bill walk out his front door for the first time into the beautiful Alaskan wilderness free. Um, yeah, I get I get emotional thinking about it. It's going to be something. When will the documentary be out? Yeah, Bella, great question. That I, I've been getting that one a lot lately. People are like, come on, we want to see it already. We still have a long time to go. Uh, the goal with the documentary is to follow people around for the course of a year eating the proper human diet. Bill just surpassed seven months and he's doing amazing. But we still haven't even hit a year on Bill yet. And we're still accepting other people into the documentary to film. So we filmed Bill. We filmed Rancher Maggie, who is an 82 year old carnivore from Canada. And she's been yes. eating the proper human diet for 65 years. She's the only person in the documentary that has nothing wrong with her. No, no issues, no ailments. She, she like never gets sick. Um, but we're covering her because I think it's important to cover aging. Everyone is worried about growing old and aging. And she had so much wisdom to share with us. So we have her story. We're not really following her for a year, but then we're also following Jeff DeProsperous. Jeff mm -hmm. is on a journey to be cancer free. He was diagnosed with terminal stage four cancer. And Adam and I went out and filmed him for a week and we want to go back and film him some more. And we're still taking more entries. So our goal is the summer of next year. Um, but uh, maybe a little bit after that, we'll have to see. 
we don't want to rush awesome. it. We're like, we get we get one shot at this. We want to do the best job we possibly can. So, well, that's a good question. So, if uh, is there a chance for you know possibly more documentaries down the line too? So, is it only one shot that you're planning on, or is there possibly to add on? Yeah. Hey, Adam, you want to take that one? Sure. Yeah, definitely. So, essentially, the main documentary was uh, what we were gunning for to begin with, but. Right. There's so much to be told and, and so many topics to cover that we've essentially now viewed the main documentary as a hook for a series that's going to follow later um, episode series on each uh, particular subject like aging, type 2 diabetes, women's health, uh, the, the, all, these, all these topics where everybody have health improvements. That's, uh, that's kind of where the series is going to go. From there okay and what platform are you guys planning on looking into yeah well initially the goal was we want to reach millions of people and the biggest right. platform for that would have been netflix but we actually have higher aspirations right now we're trying to partner with angel studios to be on the big screen you um, bet. which is a big goal to reach but um they actually a little bit of my background, I'm actually in the basement of a movie theater right now. My wife and I own a small town movie theater. So that's part of the reason I'm doing the documentary. I've always loved movies. I actually found the ketogenic diet through a documentary on Netflix like 10, 15 years ago. Um, but long story short, Angel Studios is doing some really amazing things. And they recently had a documentary feature that was that was featured in movie theaters all over the world, which is kind of uncommon for documentaries. It's kind of a long shot, but that's our goal right now. We're actually working to, towards putting together, uh, Angel Studios calls it a torch. It's basically a prototype. It's like, this is what we have so far. It's 10 to 15 minutes long. And that was why we went out to film Dr. Barry. We had almost everything we needed. We got so much great footage with, with Bill, Maggie, and Jeff. Uh, but we and also Dr. Tony Hampton, he's just incredible. That's we filmed right. him out in Chicago, uh, but we we had to have Dr. Barry in the in the torch as well. So that was that kind of completed all the footage we need for that. And now we're working to edit all that together, which I'm really excited for because we have so much incredible footage and stories already that. And I've been doing a lot of stuff on YouTube, but I can't show any of that on YouTube. It has to be original for the documentary. If we show it on YouTube, it kind of spoils it. And then, you know, Netflix or these streaming services are like, well, you already showed that on YouTube. We don't want to show it in the documentary. But long story short, we can show some of the good stuff in this torch because it's kind of a prototype, a teaser for the, the movie itself. So that's what we're working on as a big next step right now. Oh, I have to ask you, what was the uh, Netflix special that um, introduced you to the ketogenic? It was Tom Naughton's Fat Head. Oh, oh yes, I love that. that long great. time ago, right? I, long had to be time one ago. Of the That's way back. Yeah, and, and I had never really—I don't know if I heard of keto before seeing that on Netflix. And I suffered with just clinical horrible depression most of my adult life. And I tried the ketogenic diet after watching that. It just so much in there. He was almost like a little Dr. Barry. There was so much after I watched. It, I was like, "That's just common sense." Like, why didn't I ever think about it that way before? So I tried it then. And the ketogenic diet was the only thing that ever really touched my depression and anxiety, uh, but it didn't do anything like carnivore has for it. But yeah, that was that's kind of what led me. And then I did keto on and off for years and, until I found the, the proper human diet about a year ago. For those who are new to a carnivore lifestyle and are wondering why you're having symptoms like muscle cramping, lower energy in general, and headaches, it is completely normal, especially when you are still adapting to this lifestyle. Leaning on a high quality electrolyte supplement like this one from Element is an excellent option. I recommend this blue teal colored box labeled raw unflavored. There's no stevia, flavorings, and extra ingredients added. It's just the sodium, potassium, and magnesium that our body needs. These are what each of the packets look like. You can just throw it in your work bag, travel with it, rip one open, pour in whatever beverage you're drinking, stir it up, drink it down, and you're good to go. You all can get a free sample pack like this with any purchase by going to the URL shown on the screen, drinklmnt.com slash S-B-G-A-L. Also link them down below. I love that story. I feel like these little pieces, a lot of us came from keto. I came from keto and fasting um, and the magic pill. I don't know if you guys watched that one. Yes. That was a yes. huge player in my journey and following these stories. And when I think about the mission of what you guys are doing, like that's kind of where I could see that happening. And so I feel like that that providence and those hooks um, that that it alluded to a lot uh, for myself personally, 
I, my downfall was that I got hooked on uh, keto treats and still had like a bad addictive relationship with all of those sweet and fat together artificials. Um, what were some of the ways that, you know, that, that carnivore finished that for you and that closed that for you that keto didn't do? Yeah. Um, same thing. Very similar. I yo-yoed so much on keto and I've been doing YouTube for eight years now. I'll have people say to me, I saw you a couple of years ago. You didn't look that big on, on YouTube. Um, and then I was like, well, look four months after that, because um, at my heaviest, I was 102 pounds heavier than I am now. But on keto, I fluctuated a lot, like 50 pounds here or there, but I, I would always gain it back. My biggest thing that I realized was I can't moderate. And mm -hmm. similar to you, Emily, those keto treats and keto snacks and all that stuff, I just... I hate that stuff. When I see it at Costco or wherever I'm shopping now, I feel so bad because people are trying so hard. It says keto right on the side. You're like, oh, that's got to be good. And it's just, it messed me up so bad. I can't moderate. I'd have a little bit of that and it would just put me off the rails. And I'll be like, well, it's Saturday. I'll have a cheat day now. And then Saturday would go by and it'd be like, well, I'll just go till Monday, have a cheat day. And then I'll be like, oh, the first of the month's coming up in a week. And I would just go off the rails. So I can't, I can't moderate. My biggest realization too is, I think keto is wonderful if you're doing it properly. Uh, my biggest epiphany, I guess, I've had on carnivore or the proper human diet, I define the proper human diet as doing what is normal or doing what is natural for humans. And a lot of those keto treats are really not natural when you have all sorts of chemicals and weird sweeteners and things like that. The biggest thing I found after talking to Bill and Maggie and Jeff and all of these people Humans have just escaped so far away from what is natural. And the further we get away from what's natural, the sicker and sicker we're getting. Not just obesity, but depression and anxiety and heart disease. And the biggest realization I had recently, and that was an amazing video you did, Bella, with Professor Seafried. I was just watching that earlier. Yes. Uh, oh. He's one of the experts in our documentary. I'm so thankful for that. Oh, that, yes. that man is incredible. Um, yes. I, I wasn't ever going to have cancer in the documentary. We did a 24-hour live stream, which you guys joined in on. Thank you. Uh, that 24-hour yes. live stream, we actually went to 27 hours. But long story short, Jeff DeProsperous approached me during that, right before there. He's he, And he was just like, I could just feel it in his heart and soul. He's like, I want my story to be told. He was just, I want my truth out there about how much the carnivore diet has helped him after being diagnosed with cancer. He, he is this, you guys will see it in the documentary eventually, but he is a next level human being. Adam and I went to film him for a week and we could barely keep up with him. He's living <laughs> life to his fullest. And when he was first diagnosed with cancer, he was on the standard American diet and he was suffering. Like he would go in for chemo treatments like most people do. And he was completely worn out and fatigued and sick. And when he switched over to carnivore, he's like, Carrie, this is incredible. He's like, mm -hmm. I, I need less chemo and I'm not tired. And when we went to film him, he's like, I feel like I'm 20 years old right now. We're chasing him around. He's going to the gym. He's still coaching. This is with stage four cancer. And by the way, his he just recently hit, I think he's just about to hit his 40th round of chemo. And wow. he'll fast for five days. He's full carnivore when he's not fasting. And then he gets chemo right in the middle of it. And mm -hmm. he was running circles around me and Adam. Like the amount of energy he had was just incredible. And he attributes it all to the proper human diet. He doesn't have inflammation in his body, his proper metabolic health. And Dr. Seafried has talked about this, how effective uh, chemotherapy is while you're in ketosis. And in a lot of cases, you need less chemo medicine. And sorry, I could go on forever about Jeff, but we were never going to have you. cancer in the documentary until I talked to Jeff and heard his story. And then I started to realize like, hey, this whole thing with cancer and what Professor Seafried's yeah. talking about, cancer is a metabolic disease with metabolic treatments. It's like a microcosm. It's like a reflection of the bigger problem we have with type 2 diabetes, heart yes. disease. Like it's all just metabolic health. It's all the same thing. Right. You have all of these experts that are so passionate about it in their own specialty, like Dr. Philip Ovadia, when I interviewed him. He's so passionate about metabolic health for heart disease, which is great. Yeah. And then Professor Seafried, he's so passionate about metabolic health for cancer. And then I started seeing all these experts. I'm like, they're so passionate about the same thing, but it's all connected. It's the root cause of all of these problems. If you're going into it like Bill did for obesity, you fix your metabolic health, you're, I think you're reducing your odds of getting Alzheimer's, dementia, or down the road cancer. It's like all of these things are just connected. And that was one of the big uh, kind of epiphanies I had here recently while filming all of these different experts and individuals for the documentary. 
That is so invigorating, the the theme of the connections overall. And um, I'm so excited we get to hang out with you guys at uh, KetoCon Hack Your Health coming up in a couple of months, oh. right? And um, and it's the same, it's very similar. It's like this ketosis that we get into with the carnivore that we kind of phase in and out of. And so we have so much to connect with the other communities that are excited about health. Um, but mm-hmm. I love that what you're talking about, it gives us this relatability across every level. I do. I feel like there is not a human on this earth that I cannot relate some portion of this message with because they have suffered some effect of, you know, poor nutrition and that it's what we're eating that right. is causing all of these ill effects. I, I love that you said that, Emily. And just, just one other thing I want to say, because people are like, you know, healing humanity, that's such a big claim. And I believe humanity yeah. needs healing from all those reasons we talked about cancer, um, heart disease, diabetes, all of those things. But if you if you just ignored all of those, uh, this was a conversation I had with Dr. Barry too. I'm, I'm like, people on the standard American diet, which is most people, not just Americans, uh, you have this brain fog, you have this fatigue. I know I had it horribly before, oh, and yeah. it's almost like yes. an impairment. It's almost like a sickness. I, when I was on the standard American diet, and I've since learned more from like Professor Georgie Ead, she's saying you get inflammation in your brain and you have poor metabolic health, you get brain fog, you get fatigue. The, she told me the brain requires an incredible amount of energy to function. You put the wrong fuel in, it just can't keep up. So you're, you're in this constant state of fatigue. And kind of what I've realized was most of humanity right now on the standard American diet, they are sad and they are fatigued and they have brain fog. And when you're like that, you just go along to get along. You're going to go sit on the couch. You're going to go do the bare minimum. You have hopes and dreams and goals and things you want to do. You love your children, but you're too tired to go and play with your children. You have friends, but you're too tired to do anything with them. And that was one of the big things I realized recently too. It's like humanity needs healing aside from all of these chronic diseases and cancer and all of these things. Just that most of society right now, I believe is, is sad. They're brain fog fatigued and they're walking around at some level of impairment. I always tell people, I'm like, you just, you deserve to live one day feeling like this. It's so yes. sad that many That's people right. will never feel this way. Yeah, really. Uh, what, what we tend to find out is uh, most people are living in, uh, in a malnourished state, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, really to put it down to that point, that's exactly it. But most people think that, oh, I have a lot of weight on me. So therefore I can't be malnourished. Well, we're nourished with the wrong type of nutrients. We don't have the, we have all this excess, everything else, which causes our moods and everything to go down. So no, I, I totally, I totally like how you're saying it where we're all on board on that. That's awesome. I love that. You're going to be explaining it to the world. Hopefully. Yeah. Time. It's, it's a hard thing to explain, but as Adam said, with Dr. Ken Berry, we had high expectations for him, of course, and he knocked it out of the park and on that point in particular too. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of that in the, in the documentary as well. And yeah, what we got with Dr. Hampton too, was just incredible. I, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to share some of this with, with people. I have a follow up on that. So you mentioned that a lot of people, they don't realize they're feeling sick. They're feeling sad. They have inflammation in their brain. I live that life through a vegan diet, a standard Chinese diet, a standard American diet. When you cut out all of the processed foods, but only eat fruit and vegetables, you are still eating inflammation. And I want to know how you think about eating plants because every day I get comments, how can you not eat vegetables? How can you poop without fiber? What is your response to those types of things? Oh, I love that question, Bella. And it hits close to home. My daughter, Emma, was a vegan for five years. And she is now carnivore. Oh, wow. And she has changed her whole life around. And it's another reason I'm so passionate about wow. this, because she was suffering. And one thing that I realized, too, is I wasn't strict vegan. But leading up to uh, starting carnivore, I was pretty much plant-based. Like I would have a salad for lunch, a salad for dinner. I have a little bit of protein and I have some low carb vegetables, like some broccoli or cauliflower or something like that. And I was miserable. I still had depression. I still had anxiety. Um, I had arthritis. I had sleep apnea. I was snoring. I still had all of these um, issues. And I, right. I get so many people telling me this now too. They're like, Kara, you would have done the same thing. You know, you're down a hundred pounds since you're heaviest and all this other stuff. You would have done the same thing if you just eliminated sugar and ate uh, mostly plants and fruits. And I'm like, no, I did that. I tested. I, and I was so, I'm not a moderator. So I think 
carnivore works well for me because I'm either all in or all out. But when I was doing keto before this, I was very strict. It wasn't like I was eating salad for lunch, salad for dinner, and then having ice cream. Like I went stretches like years sometimes and I was still yeah. suffering. One of the things Dr. Barry told us when we interviewed him too, is he's like, people don't realize, they'll say a lot of people, Bella will say, I'm not mm -hmm. vegan. I'm not carnivore. I'm just in the middle. I just moderate. Right. And Dr. Barry, as he always does, he put his finger up and he's like, uh, 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 uh. Most people that say they just moderate, they're eating plants. Because if you look yeah. in the grocery store, there's 60,000 products in the grocery store. And all those processed products, they come from plants. Sugar yes. comes from a plant. All of that yeah. stuff, the majority of stuff, I think he said something like 70% of the things most people eat come from plants. And so a lot of us are kind of plant-based as it is right now. But um, well, if you think about the American staple, the burger, yeah. the burger is a plant-based food. Sure, it has a little bit of meat on there. But if you weigh everything, the plants are going to weigh out, weigh that meat. So 100%. yes, eat plant-based at, at every period of the time. So it's time to shift that, at least be a little bit meat heavy. And I'm glad that you're actually there to... Uh, to uh, talk about that. But uh, first, I, I want to find out with Adam, how did you two hook up on all this? Mm -hmm. Well, I was already doing the carnivore diet and was uh, in the, the middle of, you know, YouTube University with the carnivore diet and things like that for approximately two months before I seen Carrie's 30 uh, day video. And uh, after that, I subscribed to the channel. He's a homestead channel, which I also right. subscribe to a lot of homestead channels. But his was the only one, I guess, that I had never found. <laughs> but uh, as soon as he came out with that 30-day video, I started uh, watching a lot of his content. And he came out with uh, this proclamation. I, I'm going to start a, um, a documentary. And there's never been anything like this that I've seen. And, you know, it needs to be more like cinematic in style and have emotion and connection, a real connection with people and tell real stories of individuals over the course of a year. And when, when he came out with that, I just, I emailed him, you know, he had thousands of subscribers and I thought there's no way that he's right. going to get this email. <laughs> I said, I'll do anything. I'll sweep the floors if I have to, I own my own <laughs> business, but I also know the value of being a good employee. So whatever you need to do, uh, whatever you need done, I'll, I'll fill in that gap and, uh, and help. So that's, that's how we got introduced was through an yeah, email. <laughs> I'll just add to that. Adam's kind of humble, but Adam is incredible at what he does. He's a photographer by trade. He's, he's photographed presidents, Super Bowls, like everything. Um, but also he's, I, I don't know where I would be without him. I mentioned earlier, we did, we've been doing some crazy things. One of the things I'm really proud about with our documentary is so many documentaries out there, they're biased. You guys have seen these yes. ones on Netflix, oh, I'm sure. Oh God. Sponsored yeah. by Beyond Meat or whatever. Yes. Ours, we've raised, actually, when we went to film Dr. Barry, we just hit a hundred thousand dollars on our GoFundMe. Um, and it's all crowdfunded, wow. which I'm very proud of. It was a lot of hard work. Like Adam and I were on a 24 hour live stream trying to raise these wow. funds for the documentary. But I'm really proud of that fact because even some of the good documentaries, there's always some sort of bias because somebody's paying for it in the end. And everything that we've done so far, it's been we've raised the funds through crowdfunding. And yeah, the biggest thing that I think is going to set our documentary apart is there's some really good documentaries out there that get into the science and the experts. And we're going to have all of those. Um, but hmm. some of them rely only on that and they don't have these emotional connections. We have hmm. really deep emotional connections, almost to the point where it's like we need to chill out on the crying a little bit. But there's <laughs> nice. we, love we that. connect with Bill, we connect with Jeff. And like when you first um, the hook that we have for the documentary, when people start watching it, I don't know how they're going to be able to say, oh, I'm good now. I don't want to see Bill walk out his front door at the end of this and lose hundreds of pounds. So that's one of the things that I think is going to kind of set our, ours apart. But um, yeah, I'm so thankful for Adam. He just knocked it out of the park. When we just filmed Dr. Barry, the footage we have, the composition, the lighting, things that people take for granted in really good films, uh, Adam knocked out of the park. And those are the things that are necessary to get us on the big screen or even Netflix, one of these streaming services is we got to have that level of quality. Mm -hmm. Minor question. When you guys were uh, coming away from your filming with Barry, I saw a lot of this. What is that? Tell me. <laughs> so Dr. Barry, <laughs> if you look at his thumbnails, he does this a lot. Oh. Of his thumbnails. 
Right, and he does. Yeah. I, I called him out on it. It was pretty funny, actually, because so Emily, I'm driving my family insane. I'm almost one year as a carnivore and I'm nonstop. I'm watch Bella. I was just watching yeah. Bella's video before this. And Bella, my daughter, oh. walked in and she was like, She is beautiful. And I was like, That's Bella. Wow. This was my older daughter, Lily. I'm like, I'm gonna be on a call with her in like two hours. We were watching the Seafried <laughs> one. Um, mm -hmm. but my family is sick of the carnivore content. I'm constantly watching and I'm constantly watching Dr. Barry. And I started doing the finger. Like if I have something important to say at home, I'll be like, oh, wait a minute. And they'll be like, dude, put your finger down. <laughs> so when I interviewed Dr. Barry, we did a video afterwards, a YouTube video. And I said to him in the beginning, I'm like, Dr. Barry, I got to tell you, I've been doing this a lot lately. <laughs> and he thought it was really funny. So I, I got comments from people in the past. They're like, stop. Uh, stop imitating Dr. Barry. I'm like, well, isn't that kind of a good form of flattery? And now I have permission from Dr. Barry. He's like, no, it's funny. Go for it. Love it. <laughs> it's iconic. I see like, I see visions of a lot of this happening. Right? We can like go th make this run wild when we're at Hack Your Health, get a picture of all of our favorite yes, I influencers doing a little bit of this. Like, Dr. Yeah. Barry Finger. That's right. Carrie, Adam, thank you so much for your time. I'd love for you both to share where people can find you. How can people support your work in making this documentary? Yeah, so I have a YouTube channel. It's called Homestead How. I have yet to switch it over, but we also have one at Healing Humanity. Uh, but I do a lot of my carnivore videos on Homestead How. Uh, our website is healinghumanity.movie. And if people are interested in participating, we're still looking for more people to follow. They can um, contact us through the website and we sell merchandise on there and things like that. And every penny we get from merchandise, if you buy a shirt or one of our salt shakers, if you do a super chat, all of our super chats, 100% of those funds go straight to the documentary. It's a passion project for us. So we're not taking any of that money off to the side. So yeah, healinghumanity.movie. I have a channel, Carnivore Today, and uh, our YouTube channel for the uh, Healing Humanity documentary is at Healing Humanity Movie. So if you're looking for us on U uh, YouTube, it's he Healing Humanity Movie. And uh, along with that, uh, we also have uh, GoFundMe, so folks can go to donate.healinghumanity.movie. Uh, We'd appreciate uh, anybody to go at least go check it out and uh, look at all the posts and comments and donations that we've already had. And if you can't donate, maybe consider just sharing that donate link. That would that would really be awesome. All of Carrie and Adam's resources, socials, links that they mentioned are linked down below in the description box. Thank you guys so much. This was amazing. Thank you, thank you thank so much, you. Bella, Raymond, and thank Emily. You. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure you check out the links down below in the description box on how to support Carrie and Adam's documentary, Healing Humanity. If you're new to this carnivore lifestyle and you're feeling a little bit lost and overwhelmed and would love to belong to a tribe who keeps you on track and answers your questions, feel free to check out my next 30-day carnivore challenge in the Steak and Butter Gang community. You'll be able to work with an incredible team of coaches, including Coach Raymond and Coach Emily. Emily, and you'll have access to live Q&As from all of the brilliant guest speakers shown on the screen now. Professor Thomas Seafried, Dr. Elizabeth Bright, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Tony Hampton, Dr. Robert Kiltz, and Coach Rebecca Heishman. For more details on the Steak and Butter Gang community and how to join us, just go to the URL shown on the screen, sbgmeetup.com, or you can check out the links down below in the description box. And finally, before I wrap up, I just wanted to share something that I have been integrating every single day to protect my eyes from harsh blue light. This really helps with optimizing sleep, which in return really boosts our energy level throughout the day and that is wearing blue blockers as you can see i've got two that i love so much this yellow one is medium protection and you can wear these all throughout the day whenever it starts to get a little bit dim outside these red ones are really what i recommend investing in they're maximum protection the moment it starts getting dark outside i start wearing these red blue blockers it protects my eyes from the harsh blue light in our laptops tv phones, iPads, anything that is digital, we want to be wearing red blue blockers so that our eyes don't feel strained, dry, and tired after a long day of being in front of screens. These are what the blue blockers look like. I personally like this style the best because of the adjustable nose rests. They're light and incredibly comfortable as well. If you guys would like to check out my favorite blue blockers, I have linked them down below alongside my discount code. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. Please don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and turn on the bell and notifications to not miss my future uploads. I'll see you in my next video. SVG out.